Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will explain the coagulation cascade. Let's imagine that there is a broken vessel. Von Willebrand factor provokes platelet adhesion. More platelets arrive and organize a party, releasing serotonin, ADP, and thromboxane I2. This phase is called platelet release reaction. Subsequently, there is the phase of platelet aggregation with formation of the platelet plug. And this is the primary hemostasis. When a vessel is broken, also tissue factor arrives and provokes the beginning of the so-called extrinsic pathway with the activation of factor 8 that activates superfactor 10. And here starts the common pathway. The superhero factor 10 activated transforms the both prothrombin in the space both thrombin that transforms this little snake that is fibrinogen into fibrin where platelets remain attached. The intrinsic pathway can be activated even without a broken vessel as it doesn't need a tissue factor. Factor 12 becomes factor 12 activated, that activates factor 11, that activates factor 9, that activates factor 8, and we arrive again to the factor with superpowers 10 and to the common pathway. Extrinsic, common and intrinsic pathway constitutes secondary hemostasis. When coagulation cascade is active, also mechanism of fibrinolysis begins. I like to imagine plasminogen as a happy scissors that when meet the tissue plasminogen activator become a mad scissor that is the plasmin and that cut all the fibrin. In this pathway there are also some inhibitory factors that help to control the coagulation cascade. One is the tissue factor pathway inhibitor that inhibits the extrinsic pathway then there is the thrombomodulin that inhibits the transformation of prothrombin into thrombin and of fibrinogen into fibrin. And then there is also the antithrombin that inhibits both the intrinsic and the common pathway. Okay, I hope that it was enough clear in this way. The draw is part of a series of drawings that will be published in the future. More information in the next videos. Bye!